Hello there guys, welcome back to Unis Talks Football, welcome back to a brand new video, I hope all of you are doing well today, we won, we won, Chelsea won 1-0 won against Al Hilal in the Club World Cup semi-final, uh, we're through to the final, playing for a trophy that we have never won, that we don't have in our cabinet as of yet, we've tried to do it once before, we failed against Corinthians, we're going to be playing the uh, new South American representatives and Brazilian representatives, Palmeiras. So we will see what happens on Saturday. But right now, what I can honestly say is Palmeiras are doing this and licking their lips because that performance, despite the win, was not convincing. Let's have it right. And we're going to get into the detail. But before I do a few things, make sure you catch my uh, second channel and my Twitch. Links are in the description. New career mode episodes will be there very shortly. As well as the One Football app. Make sure you download the One Football app for all of your footballing needs. This video is sponsored by One Football. Check the One Football app for all sorts of results, statistics, team news, all news, any little bits of video, um, upcoming fixtures, tables, whatever you need to know about any team in this country, in another country, your team, another team, another league, it's there in the OneFootball app. So make sure you download the OneFootball app. Links are in the description. Now, let's get into this match review. Al Hilal nil Chelsea won. Look, off the top of my head, I'm going to be real with you guys. Uh, commiserations to Al Hilal. They put up a very good fight, especially in that second half. A very good fight. Um, I think after about minute 65, 70, they actually started looking quite confident. They, at times, they looked like prime Bayern Munich in terms of the way that they were moving the ball. We had to call upon Kepa to save us a couple of times. So look, overall... It wasn't as satisfying as we would have liked. Thankfully, we got the win. That's the most important thing. Um, but we look slow. We look slow. We look slow. We look predictable. In terms of the way that we attack, it's very easy to read. Very easy to read. The team that we started off with today, Kepa in goal, a back three of uh, Rüdiger, Silva and Christensen. Alonso as left wing back, Aspilicueta as right wing back, the midfield pivot of Jorginho and Kovacic, and then we went with Havertz, Hakim Ziyech, and Romelu Lukaku up front. Now, um, in terms of the overall play, as I've already mentioned, it looked lethargic. It looked like we were taking way too long on the ball. Those combinations, those passes need to move quick. And I'd like to think that against an Al Hilal, that aren't going to be as quick as we're normally accustomed to in the Premier League, right? You'd think that we would find it a bit easier to move the ball to the pace that we would like to move it to, you know, in terms of adding more pace onto the play that we like, or adding more pace onto the passes, moving for each other, getting into spaces a little easier than we would normally in the Premier League, where it's a little bit too quick. We weren't doing that. We weren't doing that. We just weren't moving. And once again, you know, trying to get the ball the ball to the big man up top, nothing happens. We got a goal because Kai Havertz manages to get the ball on the left-hand side, manages to beat his defender very reluctantly. It literally bounces off their legs and Havertz manages to get ahead of him, gets the ball into the box. Defender complains about how his eyes got caught in the light. So he literally gave it to Lukaku, who was next to the goalkeeper two yards out from the line. It's tapped right in front of him. And for 100 million, I'd like to say that from two yards out, I expect him to put it in the net. And he did. So for that... I'm glad. Fair play. He can hit a ball from two yards out. That's the bare minimum that we've got ticked off. Thank God for that. Thank God for that, right? Um, but overall, not just Romelu Lukaku, even though Lukaku was a part of the reason of it, but everyone in that attack, except for Hakim Ziyech, I want to say except for Hakim Ziyech, everyone just looked heavy-footed, slow, like their, their feet were nailed to the ground. Most of all, though, Romelu Lukaku. Now, I'm not going to go in on him because I think now we know what to expect. I think that's just, it is what it is. It is what it is. Um, how he's still playing. I don't know if there's something in his contract. If it's because that he's 100 million and if we don't play him, then we're not going to be able to sell him for higher value. Or if we're playing him because we've paid 100 million and we don't have a choice, you know, um, from a club financial standpoint, I can understand. And I think any one of us would probably do the same thing if we were in, in, in Chelsea's shoes. As fans, it's very easy, easy for us to look at it from a footballing standpoint. And from a footballing standpoint, it's just not good enough. It's just not good enough. Um, so, yeah, we'll see what happens going forward. But I feel like, I feel like you know, having to play to one man constantly 
is having a detriment on the way that we play. It's not our style. It's just not our style. And I feel like we're forcing it way too much. Um, but on top of that, Ziesh looked very good. Ziesh, in terms of the way that he was moving, looked very good. He was being able to create space for himself. He was dribbling past. He was acting direct. He was getting uh, shots off. Every time he would cut in, he would cut out and try and get the, sp get, get the ball into good spaces. So that was nice. Aspilicueta on the right-hand side was combining with him very, very well. That right-hand side looked so much better than our left-hand side. Ziesh and Aspi looked so much better than Havertz and Alonso. Now, Alonso being Alonso, um, similar to how I criticise, you know, Romelu Lukaku in terms of being slow and heavy. Bloody hell, Alonso, not just being slow, but he got twined up a, a, a few times during that game. He got sent back to Stanford Bridge at one point. I forgot what player it was, but he literally, he, Alonso got left in the dust, left in the dust against Al Hilal. So look, um, in terms of overall, once again, it's nice when he attacks, when Alonso attacks, he gets in the ball, uh, in the box, sorry, he gets the ball in the box, he becomes a threat because he can score, he can shoot. And there were a couple of times where he didn't do that today that I would have thought he would have. You know, Al Hilal's level is not fantastically high it's not you know incredible yes they're the asian champions they're the asian champions league winners so fair play to them but in terms of levels we really should have had a foothold on this game we didn't that's the concern here we didn't even when we're trying to move the ball out of the back it's slow when you're with Christensen, Rudiger, Silva trying to move pass it to Kovacic or Jorginho after that it just hits a roadblock it's a standstill no one's moving Except Ziesh. I see Ziesh moving a little bit. And I'm like, okay, nice. Havertz, few times, few times, was making those runs, manages, but then after that, there's no option. Why? Because Alonso is, you know, still asleep. Or Lukaku's waiting about eight miles away for the ball to be crossed into him. And he, there's no one around Kai Havertz. Uh, and even then, on the ball, Kai Havertz doesn't look very confident in terms of um, being able to try and get past players, try and glide like we normally know how he can do. That didn't do really much of that. Um, so it, it, it just, everything just hits a roadblock. Everything just becomes, everything just stops. And then that allows the opposition to get back into shape. That allows the opposition to start marking again. That allows the opposition to get an understanding of what we're trying to do. And then we go back to, to route one. We go back to type. We go back to passing back to the defenders. And it's just, it's, it, you, we, can't, we can't do this any longer. We can't do this any longer. We can't. We need to have movement, man. Movement. We lack so much movement. It's ridiculous. Um, and Al Hilal in the second half, Second half, I thought would be better for us. It actually ended up, I think, a little worse. Our Hilal gave it their all. They knew they had to score. They started attacking. They started moving in very good combinations. There were a couple of shouts where they managed to get the ball into, into a very good attacking area and started working Kepa. Two shots were very good shots from outside the box and Kepa had to make the save. Um, so, yeah, overall, Al Hilal gave it their all. It wasn't enough. Now, what I'm going to say is us playing in the way that we played today against Palmeiras, that doesn't cut it. It doesn't cut it. And even after we had we had Kante come on, Kante looked all right. Kante looked, in, in terms of energy and movement, that was good enough. For me, Kante, you know, in terms of cleaning up, being able to link up, get into space, get those one-twos going, Kante was, you know, in the middle of that. So fair play to him. Mason Mount come on for some energy that we thought was going to be some energy. It almost looked like he wanted a punch up at one point. Um, I don't know if he was trying to get into the heads of the other players. But you don't have to do that. You're playing Al Hilal here, not Bayern Munich with all due respect. You know, and yes, they were starting to get into the game. But you're winning 1-0. Don't lose your head. It looked like at times Mason was starting to get a bit too agitated. It's like, no, relax. You're winning 1-0. Just keep your cool. Keep your cool. Emotional control, you know. Overall... Um, we kept that pattern up throughout the whole game. Slow, not moving it quick enough. Very few, you know, clear-cut opportunities that we actually created. I think we had about, what, 15 shots um, on goal. I think about five or six of them were on target. But uh, none of them were really like, okay, we've just worked the goalkeeper to the point where it's like, oh, big chance. Um, Ziyech managed to have a couple of shots, went just over the bar, unlucky. Same goes for Al Hilal. We managed to have um, Kai Havertz with an opportunity. 
But apart from that, there wasn't anything really substantial. Um, it was it was Chelsea hanging on by a thread up until the end, and only because the quality that Al Hilal possessed just wasn't good enough. You know, despite them putting us to the sword in the last 15 minutes, their quality just was not good enough. So we can count ourselves lucky in that aspect. And again, I put a warning out there. Against Palmeiras, it's going to be harder. If you put in a performance like that against Palmeiras, they will score and they will beat us. They will. They will. So we have to be careful here. We need to up our game because we're seeing a little bit of a trend now in terms of slower football more lethargic football, um, our attack looking blind, except for, well, as I've said, I have to give credit to Ziyech for the past five or six games now because he's been consistent. That's the consistency that I want to see. That's what I've been talking about in videos prior to that. I want to see that level of consistency that we're, we're seeing in Ziyech now shown in everyone that's in an, an attacking area, whether it's Lukaku, Havertz, Werner, Pulisic, Mount, hudson Adoy. I want to see that level of consistency. Ziyech is now in it. Long may it continue. Fantastic. He, he's got his mojo. The rest need to wake up, man. The rest need to wake up. Because if not, we're just not going to do anything. And as for Lukaku, I have to say, he got the goal. And credit, of course, because he was there at the right time to tap the ball in. I mean, you expect that for 100 million. I don't like to give praise out for people just you're doing their jobs at the minimum that's required. You know, that is what's needed. It's like saying, oh, Mason ran a lot today. Great. Uh, that, that, that's the minimum. That's the minimum, you know? So I don't want to do that, but I hope he can just wake up and just act a bit lively because it almost looks like he doesn't want to be there at times. So, and that's not today. That's not just him. That's pretty much quite a lot of players in that front line. So yeah, we got, um, we got, we got up it. We got to up it. Overall, I'm not entirely satisfied today, but we're in the final. And let's just hope we can just beat Palmeiras, get this trophy, lift the spirits a little bit, come back home, and start going on from there. Because we've got a Carabao Cup final to think about. We've got to play Liverpool. We can't play like this against Liverpool. They'll, 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 they'll kill us. They'll actually kill us. So we, we have to wake up quick. You know. Remember. Standards have to be kept high. There's no you know uh, trying to find shortcuts or excuses. No I'm not about that. We're in a key part of the season here. Carabao Cup final coming up. This final coming up on Saturday. Champions League last 16 kicking off this month. Top four, whatever we're trying to find in the league now. It's a busy time. we got to keep the standard high. we got to lift ourselves and stop playing lethargic and lacklustre football in the manner that we're doing so far. So let me know what you thought in the comment section below. I'd love to hear it. Hit the subscribe button if you are new. Hit the notification bell to be notified once I've uploaded. Smash the like button if you've enjoyed this. And yeah, I will be uploading for you guys tomorrow. So make sure you guys are here for that one. I'll see all of you then. Thank you all so much for watching. Have a good one. See you tomorrow, people. Take care. And peace.